Hey everybody, uh, Vintage Sewing Machine Garage here. I've got the sick Kenmore outside again, and I think I've gotten lucky. There's not much wind out here today <laughs> because that really interferes with the microphone. But I have the, uh, the lid open, and I wanted to show you what I was doing. I know sometimes it seems like, boy, this thing just wants more and more time to unstick itself. So I've been working to see if I could get the zigzag attachment <clears throat> to behave. And I'll show you what I've been doing. Um, you can see if you can see me touching the dial here. And of course there's a lever. There's a lever here that goes all the way over to the needle bar. And that lever wants to move but it's sticking. And I can tell when I turn the knob this metal lever, I've got my finger under it and I can tell there's resistance. It should be moving nice and smooth, but it's sticking. And I know that that dial is not strong enough to move the lever because of the, because of the resistance we're getting. So I am going to, once again, I'm going to take yet more of the WD-40 and get it down into this long series of linkages where it's trying, it's really trying to move. But even though I'm getting some movement, I'm still, you can see how cautious I'm being because, you know, there are different pieces of this machine that want to move, but <clears throat> they are still too stiff to move on their own. I'm going to come over here. Oh, I'm tilting the machine up. So you can, once my hand's out of the way, so you can see where I'm going to be applying some more of the WD-40. Let's see here. There we go. And I'm going to come straight sideways because I've still got linkages that are not cooperating. They are sort of waking up, but <clears throat> I told all of you this would be this would be a slow process, <laughs> and and I wasn't kidding. I'll tell you. Um, so what I want this machine to do is I want it to to be happy. I want it to work and not and not get angry with me and 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 work the way it was meant to. And I can tell that it's trying, it's really trying. But you can see, if you see, if I get out of my own way, look at where, I'm, where I've got my fingers here. If you see where I've got my fingers, I'm, I'm trying really hard. I've got my hand on the knob and now when I turn on the knob, it wants to move this lever, but again, there's there's just there's resistance where there shouldn't be. And it's it's trying, so I'm trying to help it. It's almost like training wheels. I'm trying to help the machine along gently, right? It's like when you're you sprain your ankle and you're learning to walk again. You can't you can't do it really fast. Um, now let's see, I want to move the machine. I'm gonna turn it this way and see what kind of view you guys can get. Now my dials are, let's see, yeah, the dials are right here. I've turned it around to the other side. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to shift the camera for you. Okay, now I've gotten this in a hopefully a better position where you can see. So where you see my thumb here, I'm over here, this is where the dials are. Okay, and so it's this section right in here. There is a very complex series of, um, I want to say they're, they're almost like cams in a way, but there's many linkages that all work together 
to, to get this machine to work properly, you might think, why is there so much here? Remember that this machine has a number of built-in stitches. And as machines got more complicated through the 60s and 70s, and they kept making them fancier, it's just like with anything else mechanical. The more complex it is, the more potential problems you can have, especially when you don't maintain it properly. And this machine was, not only was it not maintained, it was downright abused, uh, probably accidentally by the by the prior owner trying they were probably trying to fix it and then the process they made it they made it a lot worse and so i'm having to uh, go behind them uh, that's part of what i do very often when i get a machine uh, especially if i've had to sort of rescue it from a thrift shop or i i don't get it from someone who sews regularly with it those machines are usually uh, if I get a machine from a sewer that's had it and used it and just says it's ready for a full overhaul, those machines can be a joy to work on because they've been in use. When a machine sits and on top of it getting the, the strange lubrication treatment it got, um, it makes my work a lot tougher. But I, I love these machines. I think they're worth trying. And, and, and as I said, I, I won't try forever, but I'm going to keep going. And, uh, and as you can see, this is the linkage that I've been trying to get to move and when I turn, turn that inner knob, you can see here, if, if, if I turn it and this doesn't move, then the knob's just going to turn by itself and spin. And I don't want to do that. This knob was designed to work a certain way, and I want it to work the way it was designed. So here again, you can see I'm sort of helping the linkage. Now that I know, of course, I know which, that it's supposed to move this way. Now watch, when I'm turning, I don't know if you can see this, I'm turning the inner knob. And as I turn it, now it's moving on its own, but then it's still hesitating. It's like, it's like, uh, like when you learn to ride a bike with training wheels, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just, like I say, I wanted to include all of you as I go along this thing. Uh, she's not broken, but she's still being, being fussy about getting all of these pieces to, to work together. Um, again, I'll put the lid back on it just to keep dirt and dust off of it. Uh, the temperature is getting warmer outside, and that's going to help this process. One of the things I may start to do, I may try a different product to see if I can, whoops, that's a macro shot of my WD-40 can. Uh, I may try a different product just to see if I can, uh, let's zoom back out a bit, see if I can find um, something else that might help accelerate this along. I may try that. Um, I have another product in mind. And after that, I may start to just begin to use fresh, clean sewing machine oil, which in itself is a bit, has, can have a cleansing effect. It, it's, it's more subtle and gentle, as I've shown you on, on uh, when we use it on paint finishes for machines. But it does have an effect. And it might be time to go ahead and start getting some new oil in here and trying it. It won't hurt anything. Because remember, as I've told you, uh, products like this, uh, WD stands for water displacement. Uh, it's, you know, I've used it many times to unlock things, but again, for, for getting things lubricated, we want to use an actual sewing machine oil. So anyway, that's just a quick update, guys. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting movement, and it is, you know, it's, whew, it's like waiting for ice to melt. You know, it's just a slow process. I told you guys it might be, and hopefully your restorations will not involve this, but I wanted you to see uh, that sometimes getting a machine back you don't want to give up on it it's not dead yet it's just really sick and it's it's getting better but it takes patience and um, in this case quite a lot of patience but that's okay you know I'm, I'm not it's not that it's taking a dramatic amount of my time I'm coming in I'm giving it a little medicine and then I'm letting it sit and we'll do that again and I'll come back to it in a few days and we'll see we'll see what it's uh, what it's interested in I'm finally starting to get some movement in my my presser bar but it's still it's pretty uh it's pretty stiff down here too actually this is probably a good time to go ahead and get more of this uh, WD-40 in here uh, and see if I can get some of that old goo uh, unlocked so I can get my presser bar moving that would be nice um, let's see here if uh, if any of you watching my video have any suggestions on something you may have tried before please be willing to share i've learned so much over the years of sewing machine restoration by learning from others that's how we all uh <coughs> learn to do anything i suppose but anyway i wanted to share this with you <coughs> and any of you who have a machine currently that is misbehaving that is not 
Um, it's just not, uh, the restoration is not moving the way you would hope. Hang in there. I wanted you to see someone like myself who's been doing this a long time. Sometimes I have to be patient and I have to struggle and try different things to get a machine to run. But as long as you go slowly and, and you, you think about what it is you're doing and don't get in a rush, um, it's, who knows what's possible? We'll find out. I really literally do not know at this point if I can save the machine, but, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to stay encouraged. I have brought many machines back from the dead before, and this one is, uh, it's not dead, but by golly, it's, it's, um, it, it's been pretty sick, as you can see, but we are getting progress. It's just, it's just at a glacial pace, but that's okay. The machine probably sat for 20 years in an attic somewhere, who knows, but uh, hang in there with me, guys, and uh, I have no idea how many uh, videos in this series will be and I guess it'll be until either I get the machine working again or I uh, I can always make a video on how to show you to salvage parts from a machine <laughs> but but I am uh, I'm not pessimistic I'm optimistic right now so anyway I uh, hope this was helpful uh, and if you have any again uh, advice to share uh, put it in the comments down below and stay tuned for the next installment on this on this little uh, Kenmore story here thank you everyone